UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. This is our weekly update. Our weekly UFO update today is Wednesday. We are already into October. Lots going on, but what I want to talk about and circle back with, this is 2017 when Commander David Fraber actually was on Tucker Carlson's show. But the date here is Wednesday, the 26th of May, 2021, when he's on 60 Minutes. So it's a few years later. And finally, 60 Minutes is actually catching up with what Tucker Carlson broke on Fox News. This was the first rung on the ladder of disclosure. And in our new film, of course, episode three, I get into and talk about the rungs on the disclosure ladder before the film even starts. So I keep everyone up to speed. But we'll get into that and so much more. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor, Noble Gold. And just so you know, folks, um, I've invested my some of our money uh, in, in Noble Gold. I think with, with the instability of the financial markets right now, this may be the way to go because it's a hard asset. And even though it might fluctuate, you've got something other than fiat currency or just a bunch of paper in the bank account. Um, we'll see what happens. So keeping a, a close eye on the gold market and also the financial markets around the world. Are we looking at a total collapse? Maybe, but I digress. Let's hope not. Anyway, here's our Here's our commercial for Noble Gold. All right, folks, is investing in silver today a good idea? Colin Plume from our friends at Noble Gold thinks so. We had Colin on the show uh, last month. And the reason why I did this, you know, they're a trusted sponsor, but I've invested my money with Noble Gold. A good portion of the cash that we had on hand, we converted uh, into precious metals. And I'm not telling you to do anything that I'm not doing myself. Okay, so on the national desk, Colin explains there had been a huge sell-off of silver because of its low price right now. Silver is the most useful industrial metal out there, and demand is soaring for electronics and electronic cars, solar panel circuits, as the green agenda begins to speed up. As industries pick up after the pandemic supply chain issues, the trend down should reverse quickly, and silver may rock it. Now that's, you know, he doesn't have a crystal ball, nor do I, but it certainly could go up. Folks, don't miss this. Get the team at Noble Gold a call and join thousands of others, including myself, who've taken advantage of this blip in the market. They'll guide you through the process and make it easy for you. And this month, you'll get a stunning free three ounce silver American virtue coin with a qualified IRA of 20,000 or higher. Folks, you can't go wrong with Noble Gold and that's why we've put our money in with Noble Gold. I believe it may be the safest place to put your cash right now. Call the team, 877-646-5347, 877-646-5347, or visit noblegoldinvestments.com, noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, tell them L.A. Marzulli sent you. So this is uh, Commander David Fravor uh, on the 60 Minutes interview, and it, it's really an incredible interview because it's, it's no longer... George Norrie and Coast to Coast. Now, I've been on George Norrie numerous times. I love Coast to Coast. Um, I consider myself a player there. Um, by the way, I've also been invited to a huge UFO conference next year in August, specifically in the UK. I want to thank uh, C.E. Hicks for getting me that gig. Pretty cool. So we're trying to branch out and get the word out as much as possible. But you might remember Commander David Fravor is on Tucker Carlson. And Tucker asked Commander David Fravor, what do you think this thing was? What was this tic-tac-shaped object? And Fravor looks right at the camera and says, whatever this was, was something not from this earth. So here we go. And, and he's, he's on 60 Minutes. And the crewmates stayed silent because they didn't want to look kooky. Well, the bottom line is this. Until 2017, if you saw something, you didn't say anything. American airline pilots, you know, um, Spirit Airlines, all, all the commercial airlines, there's like this unwritten rule. If you see something, just shut up about it. Don't report it. Don't say anything because there was a stigma attached to it. And that stigma was not a good stigma. And you can see what it says, didn't look kooky. So let me see, let me just weigh in on this. So I'm an F-18 pilot. I'm a trained observer, by the way, okay? Trained observer. These guys go through a a rigorous training where they're taught to identify aircraft from 20 miles, 30 miles, 50 miles, different ships. I mean, they're trained observers. And really, when they're flying, flying excuse me, an F-18, they're at the top of their game. Make no mistake about that. These are really fast birds in the sky that can maneuver in incredible ways. 
But what, what does she say? And here she is here. You can see her on the, on the left-hand side. Former U.S. Navy pilots recount day that they encountered a UFO. But uh, Pentagon verification of video lifted stigma associated with sightings. So all of a sudden, uh, in 2017, it became okay to talk about UFOs or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. So we can see what's going on here. Um, I had no idea his wing pilot, wingmate was this female pilot who remained silent until 60 Minutes. And it's sort of amazing how both of these people get on 60 Minutes. Luis Elizondo also appeared in a 60 Minute interview. And the interviewer asks uh, Elizondo, in your opinion, Mr. Elizondo, what do you think these strange lights in the sky, these UAPs are, unidentified aerial phenomena? And Elizondo shoots right back. I just love it. And he goes, it doesn't matter what, what Louis Elizondo thinks. It's what your government is telling you, that the phenomenon is real. Look, folks, this is why we're making three films. The third film, um, I'm going to show you a clip in just a second, uh, is, is with a, a pilot who had a friend of his flew the SR-71 Blackbird. That thing flies, it's still the fastest plane, as far as I know. It flies at Mach 3. You'll hear the testimony in just a second from this, this man who's an octogenarian and had his pilot license way back in 1949, a year before I was born. Now, I don't know whether this gentleman is still alive. I filmed this before COVID, probably 2017, 2018, so, something like that anyway. So it's a very interesting story. And of course, back then, um, you didn't talk about this stuff. Why? because you didn't want to look kooky. That's a direct quote. Former pilot claims a Navy crewmate stayed silent on UFO sightings so they didn't look kooky. And that's where we are. Folks, I'll wrap it up by saying this. Um, I read an article today about Jacques Vallée, who still is unsure about what the phenomenon is. And that's fine. I understand that. Um, I don't know what he's waiting for. Uh, all the research that I've done points to a very nefarious agenda. Dr. David Jacobs also believes that there's a very dark, nefarious agenda to this whole thing. Let me just say this. We've interviewed many people who have been abducted, lifelong abductees, who have had encounters. It's not good. And when I'm at UFO conferences, I say, how many think it's okay to abduct a five-year-old boy? Not a hand ever goes up. Why do they do it in the cover of darkness? Why don't they get permission? Why do they just take what they want? Why is sperm taken from the males and ovum taken from the women? Why are women uh, repeatedly abducted, impregnated, and then in the third month of the first trimester, they're re-abducted and the, and the baby is taken from the womb? What's going on with that? I believe that I have some answers, hardcore answers, and that's why we've made three films so far. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. This is the coming great deception, in my opinion. I've connected the dots. I'm not afraid to go out on a limb and say this dovetails with the biblical prophetic narrative. This is the strong delusion. This will change everything when they finally show up. Remember, folks, we've got two uh, UFO films out right now. Number three, we're doing a pre-sale on. Please consider purchasing it. Invite your friends over. Invite your pastor over. You know, give, it, give them away. It's time to arm the body of Christ. Because this is coming down. It's here. It's in your face. Here's number three. And I will now show you the clip uh, from a, uh, an, a pilot who's an octogenarian. And his friend, lifelong pilot also, flew the SR-71, the Blackbird, for the CIA. And I think it's second-hand information. We're not talking to the pilot of the SR-71. But I believe the account. Here it is. I am here with an octogenarian. His name is Wesley Rasmussen, and Wesley is a, is a pilot. He's been flying for years. And Wesley, you came up to me at dinner tonight um, at the Oregon conference. And uh, what I love about conferences is people come up and, and tell me these things. And they're just amazing stories. And we're going to, uh, Wesley actually will tell you this incredible story. Uh, a, a pilot who is now deceased, and I guess was in the Air Force, came up to no. you and and told you a story, and, and you're going to tell us that story, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I've been flying since 1949, 1950. I got my pilot's license in 1950, and I'm 88 years old, still flying. And I had a lot of 
flying experiences and I had a friend of mine, in fact this, we became very close friends and uh, he actually rented my house. <clears throat> and we would spend a lot of time talking about our experiences and one of the more interesting experiences, he flew for the CIA uh, as one of the <clears throat> one of his occupations, and uh, he was flying oh, once. Well, this is a SR-71, which is an um, airport airplane, but there's a CIA version of that aircraft that, that he flew uh, missions over China. This is prior to satellites. And on one uh, occasion, he was flying at uh, 70,000 feet at Mach 3. Which and is how fast for those of you who don't three, know it. Mach 3 is three times the speed of sound. A UFO showed up on his wingtip and flew there for uh, some minutes and then flashed off at a you know, it immediately disappeared. So it's going a lot faster than Mach 3. Let me ask you something. Did he, did he describe the craft to you? Did you ask him? Did no, he did him not. Look? No, no, it was, uh, no, he really didn't describe it, but he thought pretty much uh, that I would know it'd be a disc shape. A disc shaped craft. I believe so. Flying faster yeah. than Mach 3. Yeah. And the Blackbird, the SR 71, at the time, was the fastest craft on the planet. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, it still is. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. Did he mention um, any reaction emotionally, mentally? Did he did he get into that with no. you at all? Um, did he, did he speculate on what he thought it might have been? He just told me it was a UFO. That's it. Yeah. That's from our new film, Part Three: Close Encounters, folks. Mach three. You know how fast that is? That's thirty-three miles a minute. Get your head around that. And this UFO appears right next to the wing, like it, like like the plane is just basically standing still, just wink, and 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 basically flies with them, formation flying for a period of time, at 33 miles a minute, and then just whoosh, whisks away. UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. It's time. It really is time to invite your friends over, your loved ones over, give the, the DVDs to your pastor. Folks, it's happening. I'm not making this stuff up. Commander David Fravor was on 60 Minutes with his wingman, okay, wingwoman. And they're there, and they're talking about this thing, the tic tac shape object. That's 2021. The first time Fravor was on and released any of this information that I'm aware of was 2017 on Tucker Carlson. We are now in 2022. Congress has stated that, you know, we need to assess the threat of UFOs over our airspace. It's happening. And in, in this film, Close Encounters, we've got people just like the gentleman that you saw, Wesley, who, whose friend was a former um, CIA pilot and flew the fastest aircraft on the planet, the SR-71, the Blackbird. And he had an encounter. And before he passed away, he told of that encounter. Folks, we've got a pre-sale on this. It's going to for a couple of more days. Once we get the hard copies, we begin to mail things out. And of course, it goes back up. A lot of sales go to lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. There's a lot of sales going on there. Um, sale prices, you can, you can, look, I would, I would ask you to do that. Um, you know, I, I really would. I just, because when you purchase a DVD from us, it keeps things rolling. We are working on part four of our ongoing film series. Uh, on UFOs, it's on abductions, and it's absolutely chilling. And we're going to show you that clip for number th the trailers for number three and number four. Thanks so much for um, supporting what we do here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We also cover your prayers. Uh, in some ways, we are the tip of the spear. I've been warning about the coming great deception for decades. It's here. It's here, and it's being unveiled. Time to arm yourself so you will not be deceived. How do you do that? Watch all three films, folks. Watch all three films. Because in all three films, at the very end, I weigh in on it. And I talk about what I truly believe the phenomenon is. This is the coming great deception. Thanks so much for watching our weekly update on UFOs. I'll return tomorrow from our little studio here in Oklahoma. 
probably with either an on the trail or a supernatural confrontation. Remember, if you've had a supernatural confrontation, please shoot us an email, support, um, supernatural at lamarzulli.net, supernatural at lamarzulli.net. Our line producer, John Adam, will get back to you. Uh, if you can, just give us a paragraph of what you want to talk about. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. They got their knowledge from the heavens. He saw it, said, whoa, that's a UFO. This orb comes up and it's bright orange. I'm not wanting to make full eye contact with these things. Uh -huh. But from what I did see when I did look at them, they're, they're, they're like they're soulless. It was right directly above us right here, and then it started tilting and moving up like that. All of a sudden, I was being lifted about three feet off the ground. It was going slow. I was walking right underneath it.